What's up, my construction entrepreneurs? I'm on that walk. Yeah! Excited around this bad boy. So anyway, so I got up a little early. It's gonna be a little loud because I am on uh, uh, not a major street, not a major arterial street, but it's a street that has some pretty, pretty good amount of cars passing by. But I'm passing by Bear Creek, real expensive neighborhood by my house. I think uh, Tyrese bought a house in there years ago, like back in oh, uh, 2013 or something. Maybe even before then for himself. I think that was one of the first houses he bought. I think it was in Bear Creek. Anyway, all the houses over there past that are pretty expensive on top of the mountain and all that. So anyway, so hey, I wanted to talk about what's holding you back. Why are you not getting to the next level? Like, what is it? Why, why are you not jumping, right? I just did a video recently basically saying, uh, use what you have to get what you want. Like, that means like be resourceful in what you have now to get the things you want and the things you need. Be resourceful now, stop waiting Say, oh, I got, oh, I got, I got to get this in order, man, before I do that. Oh, I don't want to get in trouble on this. So that's what I'm waiting on for that. You know, th those excuses, man. Okay. No one is trying to tell you, hey, man, go on out there and do something illegal. Sh shucks, you're already probably doing things illegal. You ain't got no license. Huh? You ain't using the correct tools, but you're getting it done. That's my thing. You're getting it done, right? And now I'm just saying this is that let's get it done in the right direction. Let's let's get it done and maximize your opportunities and your resources. Okay? Let's get you in the right direction, but you gotta wanna get to that next level. Remember I did that video where I talked about um what I had to do to get to the next level years ago, man. It was, uh, I had to sell my truck. That, that blue truck, big blue, that bad boy ran on propane and gas. Man, I love that truck. My partner, Sean, he loved that truck. I think my partner used that truck more than I did. But I love that truck, but I gave it up. And now, you know, I could talk to certain contractors right now and be like, hey man, maybe you need to give up your truck to get to the next level. Dude, look at me like I didn't threw up on them, man. Like, dude, what is, what is showing with you, man? You don't even know what you're talking about. So, it may not be giving up your truck. For me, that's what I need to do to stay hands off and to head in a different direction for my career as a contractor. I had to, that truck was hindering me. I was working, I was picking up materials, I was always driving. I, I, I could not get out of the, the, the abilities of that truck and being the owner of that truck. So I had to let it go. I let it go and jumped in a trailblazer, man. An older trailblazer, okay? And, it, and that was difficult for me to, to pick up material, rolls of wire for concrete, right? So I had to improvise. Then I had to order my equipment. I had to uh, get it delivered, right? So I had to set up accounts. That had me set up different accounts now. And then I start ordering it. And I had to pay for delivery. I was like, why did I been do this? And it just be sitting there. And I have to pay in 30 days. I was like, oh wow, this is this is awesome. Then I start hiring employees with trucks and paying them for their trucks. Cause I couldn't just use their trucks. At first I was just using their trucks. It was like, T man, you gotta give me some money for this. It's like, okay, I'll give you some money. So I give them, you know, 20. 50, 80 bucks for them to use their truck to go pick up little random stuff or, or have, have stuff, carry my equipment, uh, uh, pick up rental equipment, whatever it was, man. And I didn't have to do it anymore. And I found myself more time to work on estimates because one of the things that I didn't even know back then was that to do, to do estimates and the paperwork side, you need to be in a different mental state. It's not the same as the physical energy. This is mental. So if you don't have that mental energy because you didn't already spent all your energy doing physical work, 
you'll never get that stuff done. And that's one of the things that helped me. So getting rid of that truck, but for you, it might be getting a truck, right? For you, it might be, hey, let me get a truck to get to the next level. But, but, but you got to think about what's stopping you from getting to the next level. Are you concerned about insurance? Is that the biggest hurdle? Because I can talk to you about how to, how to capture all costs for insurance and get everything paid for. Insurance is a little bit more money, okay? It is. It's going to cost you a little bit more. But what it does is put you in a different customer bracket, right? Because those same customers that you was working for when you didn't have insurance are not the same customers that's going to allow you to work for them when you do have insurance. Why? Because it's more. Okay, so you got to get out of this, man. What, what are you doing right now? I'm talking about the ones that's uh, doing work word of mouth. Okay, uh, some of us out there, we're so good and we got customers passing us on. Okay, let me, let me give you a little bit of truth on this. That's good that you're working word of mouth. But in construction, word of mouth is not going to last you forever. Okay, and word of mouth is a lot scarier than going the conventional route, okay? Because you're waiting on someone else to, to sell you to someone else, which is a great thing, okay? Now, it's not such a great thing when you're trying to get up to the next level and you can't, in, you can't increase your price because everybody are expecting you because they're sharing your price across the board. Okay, they're expecting you to, 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 let me get the same deal that you gave John, dog. Let me get the same deal that you gave Judy, okay, Joe Lynn. I want, I want what you gave them, so that's why I'm bringing you over here. That's, they may not say that, but silently that's what they're saying. So it doesn't give you the opportunity to really get to that next level being in that word of mouth sector of work. Right? It's good. Sometimes it can keep you busy, but it's not gonna last forever. And you're not gonna make a you're not gonna make the kind of money you had a potential to make at word of mouth unless you already started at a high rate charging, you know, what you should be charging, which is highly unlikely because we don't know what we really should be charging, really, you know. So uh is it you know getting out of the word of mouth? Is it uh insurance I said, right? These are, these are factors that stop us from going to that next level. I remember when I first called for um, workers comp. Man, I was so afraid, man. I was afraid to get a quote for workers comp. I, I'm not lying to you, man. I was afraid. I didn't know what to tell them. Okay, so if I tell them 5,000, is they going to say it's too low and hang up on your boy? I don't know. I didn't know at that time. I didn't have the, you know, now I feel like this. I'll ask you anything. The only thing you can say is no or get the hell out of my face. That's the worst you can say to me. No, no, Tyrone, get, get out of my face. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't want to talk to you. Whatever it is. I mean, it's only words. So I ask anything now. But back then, that was my uh, one of my issues. I was afraid that, to even call about insurance. I was afraid to look at my bank account. You know, are you afraid to look at your bank account? Honestly, are you afraid to look at your bank account as a contractor? Because you know, you know, you, you know what's supposed to be in there ain't in there. You know, you may have spent too much because you ain't keeping track of it, and you ain't keeping your accounting up, so you don't have what you need to have in there. Yeah, I was afraid of that too. But when you got money, you're going to look at that bad boy every day, every minute. Send me alerts. I got like 12 different alerts that alert my phone, man. Alert my phone because I ain't looked at it. I got alert because I ain't, because you ain't looked at your account. Wait, 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 wait. But you need to look at it, sir. Sir, you ain't looked at it. Listen, man, you got to get to the next level, okay? It's right. You got to spend time at, at, at certain levels. I'm not telling you to... to, to to take the elevator when you need to take stairs. All I'm saying is that a lot, a lot of times we stay at certain levels because we're coasting. No pressure, no real commitment, no, no, no level up. And it's time to start thinking about leveling up, especially if you did your time, you did your bid, 
on that level. It's time to level up, man. How do you get to the next level? And, and you can't be afraid to get to the next level. A lot of people, a lot of people think, and I got this from Gary, Gary V. I listen to him too, right? He was like, the thing that's holding people back is what other people thinks about them. Concerned about what other people think, think about them. And I was sharing this to someone the other day on the job. And I was, I really was. And, um, and, 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 and it took me a while to humble myself, drop my pride to realize like, yes, you, you were, you were. Cause I used to be like, dude, I don't, I don't care about what people think, say, talk, do, but I do. Deep down, I do. And it may not be the strangers, of course, you don't know. But is it your mom? Is it your wife? Is it your kids? Is it your mother-in-law, right? Is it your grandmother? It don't matter. It's someone. It may, you may not have gotten over this. It took me a while to get over it, okay? And I'm still battling with it at times, okay? But you got to think about those things as well. So what's stopping you from getting to that next level? Maybe it's numbers. Maybe it's estimating numbers, not not being confident in your uh, in your numbers. Take a class, man. Excuse me. Take a class, man. Learn how to um, learn how to find ways that can work with you on learning your numbers. Uh, what I mean by that is that not everybody could just take an estimating class and learn from you. Okay, you got to be careful with certain estimating class because you, if if you're not if you're not acting as a GC, right, and you're acting as a sub, that's a different type of estimating class. See, when you go into classes, especially you know like Turner Construction. Uh, um, uh, Davis, all these big corporations be doing these estimating classes out there for subcontractors. The reason why it goes over a lot of subcontractors' head, because I taught at one of those classes too, I was a, I was able to convince one of the project managers to get me in there because they go over our head in there. You got their estimators going in there talking about how they do estimates, but they're doing estimates at a uh, GC level where you're getting subs. We're doing estimates at the sub level that submits bids to the G, to the to the GC. So the only thing you can really help me out with is telling me what you want to see on an estimate. Okay, how you want it structured, and every company wants it structured differently because every GC has a different type of customer. So Turner, you can really only help me out the way you want to see it. And then the way you do an estimates, if I'm not on that level where I'm doing estimates as a GC, it goes over my head. Line up numbers, comparing numbers. No, I got to learn how to do, how do, I, how do I charge for these guys? How do I break this job down to be profitable? How do I understand my, my labor burden, my overhead? You know, how do I, how do I put, how do I count, how do I cash for my sales percentage? You know, how much over should I charge for this material? Okay, what should I watch out for? Should I add some contingency in there? When does when does contingency fall under what project and for what reason? You know, those are type of things, right? But so so you gotta find the right class to teach you what you need to know. But you won't know the right class until you take one. You gotta go take one. So what else is there? Is there so so estimating? That's a big one. A lot of us don't wanna really get into estimating and really learn about estimating. And, and we, do, we don't wanna sit down and do that tedious work that we really need to do to get to that next level, okay? Or what else is there? Um, maybe you feel the tools. Tools is a small thing, okay? Tools is a small thing. You can hire somebody with some tools, okay? I don't have all the tools in the world, okay? I have quite a bit, but I don't have all of them. Yeah, and some of them break and I don't hot and I don't go and bomb right away. So you get people that, that has tools. So what? You, you, you got the right tools. Hire people that, that have the right tools. And you're done. You're good. Good to go, man. Okay? Uh what else is there? What else could be holding you back? Oh, yourself. That's the biggest one. You 
you getting in your own way. That's what's holding you back. It's just you, man. That's all it is. You need to get out your own way to be successful. Okay? Go and take everything that I said that you're missing, everything that you know you're missing on, and go and learn it. And get out your own way. Stop sabotaging your business. Make sure you account for the money that you need to account for for your construction company on every estimate, every number. You know you need to jump up to the next level. There's people reaching out to you that want your numbers for certain jobs to get you to the next level, and you running from it. You like, yeah, yeah, I'll give you some numbers, man. I got you, man. Yeah. Oh, oh, I have it for you next week. You know you ain't about to do those numbers. Okay? You know you ain't about to open up those plans and get down and take those notes. When? When are you going to do it? When? Come on, man. Let's go. We got to get this. This ain't, this ain't no, this ain't no, 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 no make under minimum wage for the rest of our life type of deal. We got to get to the next level. If you don't know how to do it, then hire someone that can do it. Then hire someone that knows how to do it and get them a piece of the pie. That's all you got to do. If you can't do it all and you need to go out there and do it, then you hire someone that can help you with it and you give them a piece of the pie. You convince them that it's a, this is a big enough piece for you to have. 3%, 5%, I don't know what it is. But... You need to do what you need to do to get to the next level. If that's giving up a piece of pie, then give up a piece of pie. It's not gonna last, it's not, you're not gonna give up a piece of pie forever. Just give up a piece of pie for a little bit. One or two jobs till you learn what they know. Okay? Or till you can have them at an employee level. I don't know. Or maybe that 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 deal works for you. I don't know. But stop allowing things, stop allowing things to affect you to stop getting to the next level. Stop. You need to get to the next level, man. Get out your way. I'm going to let you go with that, my construction entrepreneurs. Kind of went long with this one. But hey, remember, hustle hard, then hustle harder. I'm going to catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.